All right, so you might be wondering how you got here, and quite frankly, that's a fantastic question. If you don't know me already, I don't know why you're watching this video. <laughs> but my name is Mark, I'm a student, and uh, today is July 14th. It is Bastille Day, and... I'm here to eat an entire baguette. Now here's the thing. I don't think I'm gonna make it through the entire baguette. I'm gonna be honest with you. Little history real quick about how this video came about. So this is an application called Todoist that I use on a daily basis. Over here, there's a list of video ideas where I list out a ton of ideas and when I go to write a video, I usually pick from this. This video here is called Eat a Whole Baguette. And if we look at the comments, on December 24th, I wrote eat with Vegemite and different toppings. I'm not eating it with Vegemite. I'm not doing that. But that is to say that this task came about around November. We go to Discord. This is the Oink Discord. I'll put a little animation thingy. It's not great, but I made a while ago up here. A while ago, I was desperate for ideas. Uh, one idea was drink a gallon of milk. And I drank a gallon of chocolate milk. That's a video you can find in this corner here if you're interested. It's not on this channel though. Now, the reason why this video is going up on this channel is because it's an easy video to make. It's one of the two videos for a week. It's really stupid. Eating for a video, also a little weird. So this is gonna be more like a podcast than anything. Someone on the server, Kron, very long time member, uh, was giving me different ideas. And here we go on November 20th, 2020. Kron said, how about next year on Bastille Day, which is today, you eat a whole baguette. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm gonna open up Wikipedia and we're gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna talk about Bastille Day. In French? Nah, my accent is still eh. I am gonna crack this baguette first. Aside from the fact I got frozen waffles. I got peanut butter and Nutella. I, I have a knife. Maybe I should get butter. Got butter. Um, God, this is a dumb. Fresh baguette though. I went to, <laughs> this is such a stupid video. I went to Stop and Shop to get these two things and I went to the bread section. I was like, I live in the city. Um, why not get an actual baguette? from an actual bakery. Ooh, it's like sourdough, dope. Anyway, uh, Bastille Day. Uh, all I really know about it is the French, during the during the end of the French Revolution, raided the Bastille that had prisoners in it. So about to find out together. I'm so sorry for this video. I'm so sorry. I was tempted for a moment to make ASMR, but I have actual ASMR videos playing now because the last one did so well and people enjoyed it. It's the anniversary of the storming of the Bastille on July 14th, 1789. A major event of the French Revolution, uh, as well as the Fête de la Fédération that celebrated the unity of the French people on the 14th of July in 1790. I'm realizing what a pain this is gonna be to edit because I have to worry about the sound so that you don't hear me chewing it really loudly. But also just like in general, I have to cut stuff out and I don't know, cause it's not like, it's not fun if I don't include any of the eating. This is, I, I, I don't, I don't know if I like this. All right, stupid video, stupid time, whatever. It's like I'm gonna be eight minutes. Blah, 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 blah. Louis the 16th. Crowds formed fearful of an attack by the Royal Army or by foreign regiments of mercenaries in the King's service and seeking to arm the general populace. Early on the 14th of July, the crowd besieged the Hotel des Invalides for firearms, muskets, and cannons stored in its cellars. The same day, another crowd stored the Bastille, a fortress prison in Paris that had historically held people jailed on the basis of lettres de cachet, literally sing, signet, signet, signet letters, arbitrary royal indictments that could not be appealed and did not indicate the reason for the imprisonment. So I guess if you are a king and you're like, go to prison and someone's like, why? And you're like, eh and they just go to prison. This video feels dangerously close to a mukbang and I don't want that. I'm never doing this again, but I told other everyone I would do it. And it makes for a hilariously stupid video so that when I make an actual video that ranks nine out of 10, this is 10 out of 10. So I don't have to be like, haha, it's not performing well. Hmm. Anyway, in the evening of 4th of August, after a very stormy session of the Assemblée Constituante, Lost my accent there. Feudalism was abolished. On 26th of August, the Declaration of the Rights of Man and the Citizen. So origin of the current celebration. I've not made a dent in this. We're going for the burr this time. 
So the origin of the current celebration, I guess, goes back to the 30th of June in 1878. The feast was officially arranged in Paris to honor the French Republic. On the 14th of July in 1879, blah, 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 in 1880, the government of the Third Republic wanted to revive the 14th of July festival. Many disputes over which date should have remembered, including the 4th of August, which is the end of the feudal system, as we know from a minute ago, the 5th of May, when the Estat General was first assembled, or the 27th of July, the fall of Robespierre. <laughs> And the 21st of January, the date of Louis the Sixth, Louis Louis the Sixteenth's execution. So these were the four dates competing for this celebration. So I could be eating in alternate universes. I'm eating a baguette on the 4th of August, the 5th of May, or the 27th of July. Just important to note. Probably not, but maybe. Also, I haven't had anything to eat today. So this being my main thing, and it's 1 p.m. This is not a good idea. I'm gonna get so tired. This is pure bread, but it's good bread. It's good bread. It's just a podcast. It's just a podcast while I'm eating. That's all it is. Uh, this is a very podcasty type of thing. This is so dumb. All right, you know what? That's enough history. Uh, it's cool, but you can read about it on the wiki page, not hear me blabber about it. My talking points are literally <laughs> intro, getting the baguette, sitting down, briefly introduce myself and the video's existence, <laughs> show Discord messages, and then it says, Bastille Day history, a bullet point, a momentous occasion of the French Revolution, bullet point, read from wiki, lol, I don't really know, third bullet point, continue to eat the baguette, maybe with some toppings, fourth bullet point, talk about reflection on the past or just read more quotes from your book. So, Maybe I'll do that. I recorded a video game therapy this morning. You can find the playlist here. It won't be up until Saturday. A full year of weekly video game therapies, which was very exciting. Talked about reflection a lot, so I don't really feel like doing that again. Uh, in the video where I drank a gallon of chocolate milk, uh, I just did it, it was called Chocolate Milk and Life Advice. And um, I've had this, this journal for a while now. And ever since I got it, I started writing down quotes and adapting quotes that I really liked hearing. There, none of them are direct, none of them should be direct quotes, but a lot of them are inspired by things like, you know, Ranger's Apprentice or a Stoic Philosopher. There are 145 of them, so clearly we're not going to go through all of them. I like to refer to them here and then. Quote number 10, unbroken happiness does not exist. Now I'm tempted to just leave these here as food for thought. I don't know, I like this one a lot. It's been prevalent lately. It's pretty much just, there does not exist happiness without suffering. That's pretty much what it means. Happiness is never a constant thing. It is always going to be broken up by something. On the bright side, sadness is also a con not a constant thing. It'll be broken up by the good points. It's going to take time, number 16, it's going to take time to learn how to spread your wings and even longer to learn how to fly. Um, I like this one a lot. I don't, I think this one I wrote at summer camp. It's like a nice reminder of like, when you learn to do something or when you practice something, it takes a minute for you to get into a rhythm for it. And it takes even longer for you to get better at it. I'm gonna go peanut butter on this one. So bad for you too. At least for me. A year ago I was doing keto, I mean, what's happening? <laughs> Hydration check real quick. Also a sanity check if for some reason you're still here. Ah, this one came up recently. Number 34. Sometimes you have to believe in what you cannot see. Now, this one came about likely because of religion. Um, I went through a period where I was really thinking about religion. I'm not personally religious, but I believe in religion. That's a whole topic for another day. But the point of this was because someone was like, oh, do you mean this religiously? And I was like, I guess originally I did, but you have to also believe in your future self, right? If I'm uploading two videos a week, you know, that, that's kind of for fun, obviously. If this wasn't, if making videos wasn't fun, this one is a little stupid, but if, if it wasn't fun with a good mix of like seriousness, then I wouldn't be doing it, just very evidently. But I also have to believe that at some point, kind of like what happened with the typing video, this channel might get somewhere. I originally started it to, as like a portfolio. So like, oh, I edit videos, here's a bunch of them. But then the typing video happened. So you kind of got to believe in what you can't see whether that's in the future or the past 
or not of this realm. It's your call. Ooh, number 52. Today, this week, this month, this year, it is not the scope of your life. I think this was from a Gary Vee video. I went through a Gary Vee phase where like today, if today's horrible, if this week is horrible, if my first year of college was horrible, it's not your whole life. It can feel like that because it's the present moment. So of course it feels like that, but it's not your whole life. So remember that. Number 58, only those who do nothing never make mistakes. Pretty plain and simple. I'm a really big fan of that one. The next one's from uh, Gravity Falls. Love that show. If you're curious, number 61, if you're curious, don't wait. Take a trip, find it. It's out there somewhere. You gotta go outside to do things. I don't mean literally outside, but if I want to make more friends, I have to at least walk outside. I'm not gonna meet anyone in my room. Um, I have to go to the grocery store, go to a parkour class, actually talk to people, talk to people in my classes. I have to go outside to make friends. You have to go to LinkedIn Learning or Udemy or whatever to actually learn that skill that you've always wanted to learn. So if you're curious, you have to go out and at least give something the opportunity to show up. This is a solid page. 68, be wrong as fast as you can. This leads to fast, aggressive, and efficient learning. Big focus on this one lately, but I didn't really realize it. 70, one of my favorites is tell me and I will forget. Uh, teach me, no, frick. <laughs> Show me and I will know. Let me experience and I will understand. If you sit there and watch a video on how to program, you're gonna forget. If someone shows you the programming and what it yields, okay, you'll know. You might remember something next time. But unless you try to make that thing for yourself, you'll never understand how it works and it will never stick. Pretty simple. Mostly for learning, goes for anything else. This was said by an archery instructor that I had over the summer. I feel awkward enough eating in front of people. Now there's a video of me online doing it. 72. Recently I've been saying a lot, if it was easy, everyone would do it. The first time I heard this was from my high school principal. We had an incident my senior year with gowns. Long story, but he pretty much said, dude, if this, you know, because I was organizing a bunch of things. If this was easy, everyone would be doing it. It's not easy, like chill. <laughs> That's so important, I think, to keep in mind. If Japanese was the easiest language, everyone would be learning it and I'm struggling, which I should be. 91, only compete with yourself. How did you do? How did your results compare with your goals? No one cares about how you fare. All that matters is how did you compare with how you wanted to do? So it's the classic compare who you are today to who you were yesterday, as well as who you will be tomorrow. You shouldn't be comparing to other people. Don't compare your stories to theirs. Set a goal, and if you don't make it, wow, I've been speaking a lot about goals lately. Uh, that You should compare yourself against your own self. Your past, your current, and your future self. Versions of the self. 107. This was before I found Stoicism and it's still one of the most valuable ideas I found from Stoic philosophy. When you accept responsibility for something, you are in a position to do something about it. A lot of stoicism is, if it happens, it happens. If, you know, take, not responsibility, but don't blame others, right? If I fall on the street, I'm not gonna be like, I blame the shoe manufacturer. But when you accept responsibility, that gives you power, which I think is such a valuable idea. If I'm getting trained for a job and they say something, say to do something one way and I do it. And then the supervisor says, that's wrong. If I say, oh, they told me to do it. I can't do anything about that. But if I say, oh, okay. I take responsibility for that action. Won't happen again. This is a good one to remind myself of. 109, it's the things that take the most time that are the most worth it. Patience. <laughs> and number 111, one of my favorites from a while ago is don't someday yourself out of life. Ah, someday I'll learn Japanese. Nah, do that now. Someday I'll teach myself to code. No, do it right now. And number 113, the worst addiction is an addiction to comfort. That's food for thought for you. 133, an enemy who is certain of their victory is bound to make a mistake. I think this was from Ranger's Apprentice. And that's just saying, if you're overconfident, you're gonna lose. You're gonna make a mistake. All right, last page. I made it like halfway through the baguette. I'll take that.
135. This came from, if I remember correctly, watching the movie Whiplash, where J.K. Simmons says, uh, good job are some of the two most dangerous words in the English language. Number 135 is if you ever find yourself saying good enough or good job, there's something better you can do. Definitely don't take this mindset to the extreme. <laughs> Let yourself say good job and then move forward. You wanna hit, if, if you're saying good job, that means you're ready for the next thing. 137, tying back to the responsibility thing. Taking responsibility for something is not the same as blaming yourself for something. Take responsibility for your life, but that does not mean you are to blame or at fault. It is simply a way to remind you, again, that you are in control. Things happen to everybody. I'm not gonna try and pretend that I know what anyone else is going through. But something that really helped me was saying, okay, these, these things happened. You know, whatever has happened, happened. And I have the ability to control what happens now. Now that I'm actually a legally autonomous. <laughs> That's a Slack message I have to respond to. Yeah, when you can say, you know, the past can't do anything to you now. I don't know, that is the whole thing. 138, if someone presents you with a compliment or praise, not only reciprocate, but reciprocate with a particular detail to avoid generality. This was another one from Ranger's Apprentice in the first book. I'm not gonna try to explain the context, but one of the main characters says pretty much, if you get complimented, find something to compliment back. I failed in this. One time someone gave me, we were doing like a storytelling thing, I improvised a story, and they're like, wow, really good job, you improvised the whole thing. And they're like, ah, thank you. And I, to this day, wish I had said like, I really liked this metaphor you used. It's a great way to keep conversation flowing. Even if, like me, you're not a compliments person, you can still kind of just roll with it and immediately flip it back on them. Uh, 139, thinking about the future is a recipe for anxiety. Do your 25% and let what happens happen. I had this as a Discord status for a while. <laughs> People made some jokes about it, but I'm, a, I'm at a mix between you have to go out and get what you want and also you have to let the world happen to you. Do your 25% is like going outside, going to the parkour class. And if there are people your age and you can, you, you can strike up a conversation with them, do that. But that's the 75%. So all you gotta do is get out there. It's more like 5%, do your 5%, but. Lastly, 140, this was in the context, I was talking with a bunch of friends about dating apps and whatnot. Only ghost what won't be haunted. Um, ghosting is like a thing in a lot of things, I guess, is when you just cut off all communication with people or with someone. And uh, someone, one of the friends said, only ghost what won't be haunted. And I was like, wait, did they say that? Maybe I said that, I don't know. No, I think I said that. I'm not sure, but it came up in conversation and I was like, this is true for so many things. Because not only should you not just ghost someone and they might forever think what happened. But if you try something, later down the line, you might be like, oh, what if I'd stuck with that? That is haunting. The camera just turned orange, it's gonna shut off in about 10 seconds. I made it this far through the baguette, which is a little more than I can handle myself. But thank you for watching this. Ah, there it is. But anyway, thank you for watching this very weird, strange video. If it's half an hour or eight minutes, I don't know. But either way, Kron, you're doing your fault. <laughs> but my responsibility. So yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good one. And I will see you with the language log on Saturday and a video about typing next Thursday and a dev log for a blog page that I am making on Monday. Thanks for watching yet again. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. I will see you on either Saturday, Monday, or Thursday. Peace out.